Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the second video in my garden center landscape job that I'm doing. If you haven't seen the first video, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll link it up here in the corner. Uh, I put quite a few pieces uh, up here. I don't know, maybe it's been three weeks or so ago. Um, I'm getting a new sign from my garden center and uh, landscaping a very big space up there. I had uh, sprayed the uh, grass out with several uh, vinegar products and, and, and non-chemical based products just to see if I could uh, um, kill it with that. And that was another video on uh, using alternative, al alternative methods to weed control. I'll link that one up here as well if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, so this is almost really the third uh, video for that uh, project that's up there. And I'll have one more planting job. Then I'm going to be irrigating it and uh, getting the sign and putting the sign in and putting some lighting up there as well. So a lot more steps to go. I have a lot of pieces here in front of me that you can't see yet. I'll go through those uh, before I get before they go in the ground and show you the pieces I'm using. Uh, it's very sandy up there. I've talked about that already. And uh, I'll use some sort of peat based uh, material to hold some water in place because uh, it's just a sandbar up there. Very different than the soil that's at my house, which is clay where I'm trying to drain water away. I need to hold water in place up here. Uh, this is kind of the transition zone, the bottom of this bed. Actually, uh, it's very, very, very sunny in the first, uh, from the first video. That is just cooks all day long from the time the sun comes up. That's why I've got these carts behind me because the sun's coming up right here behind me. Very, very sunny until the sun goes down. As I work my way over to the other side of this bed is actually going to transition into the shade. And so I've got a few full sun things. I've got a few what I would call transition items. And then I have a couple shade items, and I'll go through. I'll go through those. Uh, I, I think a lot of people have trans, what I would call transition space, where you're getting maybe six hours of sun, but you're not getting. You, you don't know whether it's full sun or part shade or whatever. And there's a lot of plants that actually kind of thrive in those in those spaces where it's just kind of half and half, where where you wouldn't describe it as full sun, but you also wouldn't describe. There's a period of time during the day where the sun will really uh, bake down on it. So I have maybe three of those items. So let's take a look. I have two low growing gold evergreens that I'm using. One is this Miss Lemon Abelia, which I've planted one of these in my front yard. I think I'm going to do a video uh, covering Miss Lemon Kaleidoscope and uh, Radiance Abelia. Those are three that the Southern Living Plant Collection has, and they're all quite striking, quite beautiful. But these are low growing variegated evergreens that bloom from midsummer right into the fall uh, with small blooms that the, that the bees really love. They're evergreen. These are just these are just fantastic. I can't get these in fast enough at the garden center. They only get about three feet high and about four feet wide. They're good into zone six and uh, down to zone nine. Uh, they're going to be perfect up there around my sign because they're not going to end up blocking the sign off. And I can keep them. I say they get three feet tall. I can actually keep them less than that. They're definitely little wide doming evergreen shrubs. I'm also going to use a few of these uh, color guard yucca. These color guard yucca, it looks like something that would be, uh, it'd be almost tropical. These plants are actually hardy all the way up into zone four and uh, down to zone 10. So really almost everybody watching this video can grow these color guard yucca. That sandbar that I have up here is the perfect, the absolute perfect place to grow these uh, where it's gonna drain well. Uh, my house uh, with the clay soil, I'd probably be better using these as a container plant or raising them way up. Uh, definitely amending the soil if I was trying to put them in the ground. But here at the garden center, I'm going to have great success with them uh, doing that. But these, okay, so that color guard yucca and that Miss Lemon Abelia, definitely uh, full sun all day, no problem. And they'll be right up by my sign. Uh, the next uh, pieces, I'm going to call them transition pieces, pieces that are great in part shade. Those areas where you wouldn't define them as sun uh, or shade. And the first one of those is this, uh, October Magic Ruby Camellia right here. Look at the flowers on this thing. This is a fall blooming Camellia, a Camellia Sasanqua. It will bloom several months in the fall. They're absolutely loaded up with buds. Camellia Sasanquas can take quite a bit more sun than uh, Camellia Japonicas. The Camellia Japonicas typically bloom in February, March, and maybe even sometimes into April, depending on how, how, how fast it gets uh, hot. These are hardy in zone seven to nine. They're definitely amongst my favorite plants. There's a lot of these varieties. I've covered several of them already. Southern Living Plant Collection has this um, October Magic series and they're all very striking, uh, very beautiful plants. Uh, on the cart right there, um, I've got one called Alabama Beauty that I have at my house. 
You've probably seen that one in a couple other videos. Another, another really, really great variety. But these are great, like I say, what I would call transition plants. They will take more sun than other, um, other camellia varieties, but they're probably most happy in an area that's gonna get about six hours of direct sun a day and then be in the shade uh, after that. So I'm gonna put those about halfway into my shaded space. The next thing I would put into that group would be these autumn sunburst uh, encore azaleas right here. Look at this beautiful two-tone uh, pink and white flower on this variety. This is, this is a variety that will grow in zone six. I think there's 15 of the 31 encores are for all of zone six. Um, I've got some autumn bonfire right here, which I'm also gonna use, which is the newest one, and that's really that pure red flower. I've been really impressed with this variety. It's also a zone six variety. Uh, encore azaleas take quite a bit more sun than traditional azaleas, but they're also happy in, you know, in part shade conditions, just like uh, regular azaleas are. And that's where I'm gonna use these kind of in the transition between that sunny space and some crepe myrtles I have up here that are gonna shade them a little bit. So that's autumn sunburst. And like I say, this is autumn bonfire. You've probably heard me talk about this one several times if you've been watching my videos for a while. Just a really, really beautiful encore azalea. These are gonna bloom spring, summer, and fall. So I've got my two full sun items and then I've got the camellias and the two varieties of encore azaleas that I'm gonna to use to transition toward the shady space. And then as I get up under these crepe myrtles up here, I'm gonna use these Utopia Plum Ewes. I did a video on these, I think last fall. They're really, really spectacular plants. They're hardy in zones six to 10. They'll get three to four feet in height, three to four feet in width. I'm using them as a little border at my house. I think I have seven or eight of them. They haven't done a whole lot of growing this year. That's typical of conifers. The first year you put them in the ground, they're not gonna do a whole lot. But this variety is just beyond spectacular. Uh, you know, I love ewes just in general. They're low maintenance kind of industrial plants, but this variety is, is really, really nice. And it'll be work great in that shady space up there. Then I have Deer Dolores Hydrangeas. I haven't covered this one. This is a remontant variety that Southern Living Plant Collection has. I haven't planted one of these in my yard yet. It is October and this thing is still budding up. So if you wanna know if it actually truly is a repeat flowering variety, uh, right as it's about to lose its leaves, it is still pushing out flower buds, which is amazing. Um, these are gonna be super cold hardy. Hydrangea macrophylla are very, very cold hardy. I think this is a, a zone five to nine uh, remontant hydrangea macrophylla. It's gonna be great in the shaded space. So this was the first section that went in. These butterfly bushes are still blooming. These obsession nandino look great. And the uh, baby gem boxwoods, uh, the uh, white wedding hydrangeas look great. And of course the sunshine ligustrum are always showy. And these bar, uh, orange rocket barberries look great. I'm uh, putting in the uh, color guard yucca up here because they won't block my sign. My sign is gonna go right there. Uh, over here is where the rest of this material is going. I have a row of Natchez crepe myrtles that run down here. These are probably 25 feet wide and uh, 20 feet tall or so now. And so they put quite a bit of shade down over in this area. So I put the uh, Utopia plum ewes and those deer Dolores hydrangeas kind of tucked in up under here. And in the transition between the two areas, I have these uh, autumn bonfire uh, encore azaleas. And then heading up this way, I have the uh, October magic ruby camellias in this area. And then uh, right here, I have the autumn sunburst encore azaleas. There's five of those running across there. I just have a gen little gentle curve on those. And then these are those Miss Lemon abelia, which are just so striking and so beautiful. These will stay low as well. I'm trying to keep things in this line of sight where people are coming by and turning and that kind of thing. I definitely want lower material so they'll be able to see across and uh, down into uh, all of my material around the uh, actual building and everything. So I don't want to block the view of the area, but you can see this is going to look great. I've got old bags of potting soil, which you'll never see me use potting soil to plant anything anywhere else. But uh, I, I am using it up here on this sandbar. I'm using about half the sand and a half potting soil mixture. I've got some old bags of mulch that I'm mulching with and I've got some pine straw I'm gonna use as well. So I'll show you after I get everything in the ground. Okay, so I ended up pine strawing this part of the uh, 
the job. I had extra hardwood mulch up there and I had extra pine straw here, or old pine straw here, uh, the busted bales and that kind of thing. When I do the third section of planting right here in the middle, uh, I'll do whatever I'm gonna do uniform across the whole space. But these are just beautiful, beautiful pieces. Uh, I love these uh, uh, hydrangeas back here. Really, really great plants. And these, these ewes also, just great, great pieces. But there you go, phase two of the garden center planting is complete and uh, I'm working on figuring out what I'm gonna do in this uh, middle section. Like I said, I gotta find things that are mostly only gonna get about three feet tall. I like to keep mostly uh, evergreen things. Uh, I put a few deciduous things up here. I put the barberries and a couple things up here that are gonna go dormant, but I'd like to keep it looking good pretty much year round. And then I gotta get a sign ordered for that space. So thank you very much for watching part two of my planting job here at the garden center. I'll get part three done as soon as I can. Uh, this is gonna be a great space up here where I can show customers what the plants are gonna look like in the future. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos.